In the headlines, Independent National Electoral Commission issues 186 certified true copy of documents. Catholic priests killed by bandits buried as clergy protests rising in security. Nigeria set to sign 10 agreements, MOUs, with Portugal. And on the foreign scene, Russian missile strikes an Odessa apartment and recreation center kills 17. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Ibrahim Youssef. Hello and welcome once again. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it has processed 186 requests of certified true copy of documents. The National Commissioner and Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okwe, disclosed this on Thursday at the end of the Commission's management meeting. On the continuation of the continuous voter registration, Okwe said the exercise will continue nationwide and all the resident electoral commissioners and electoral officers have been directed to continue with the exercise pending further directives from the Commission. On the uploading of the lists and particulars of nominated candidates, Okoye said by the timetable and schedule of activities released by the Commission, political parties that conducted valid governorship and state assembly primaries shall upload the list and personal particulars of their nominated candidates between the 1st and 15th of July 2022. He urged political parties to scrutinize the list and personal particulars of the candidates they proposed to sponsor at the election to avoid any mix-up and duplication of names. He also urged the parties not to wait until the last day before uploading the list and personal particulars of their candidates. And stakeholders in Ocean State have pledged their support for a free and fair election that is devoid of vote buying and electoral violence. This was the thrust of a stakeholders roundtable organized by a Center for Transparency Advocacy and attended by representatives of youth, persons with disabilities, security agencies, media, civil societies, and officials of the National Orientation Agency. The director of National Orientation Agency in the state, Olorupo Ibikule, and executive director of the Center for Transparency Advocacy, Faith Mwadishi, and the CTA team expert, Professor Anthony Kola Olusoya, urged participants to spread the message to their groups. We have been reaching out to the public through a variety of methods. Uh, we have the interface, we have town hall meetings, we have motor rallies, we have all sorts of engagements at state level and at the various uh, local government area levels. So we, the messages center on people showing active interest in the electoral process and then getting well educated as to the procedure to be adopted on the day of election and then giving due consideration to persons with special needs such as those with uh, disabilities, the elderly and the pregnant women. As we engage the different stakeholders in the electoral value chain, we expect that they will go and let this training to their members and we we'll get the commitment from the different stakeholders to also put in their effort to ensure that there's a free, fair and credible election. We are deploying observers across the 30, 30 local government areas. We we'll do our reports and recommendations as we have observed on the field. To get everybody who are going to participate in the election, security agents, pressmen and the voters in the society. The essence is when you do this, Information from this kind of forum gets stepped down, passed into society ahead of the election. And this, on the ultimate, will translate into free, fair, credible election because people will be aware. And the body of late Catholic priest, Reverend Father Vitus Borogo, who was killed by terrorists in his farm, has been laid to rest at the Independence Way Cemetery, Kaduna, Northwest Nigeria. Catholic Archbishop of Kaduna, Most Reverend Matthew Ndagosu, said the, at the funeral event that the church was sad to be burying three priests killed by terrorists in less than a year. The report. <laughs> it is the funeral mass of late Reverend Father Vistus Borogo. Tears flowed freely as hundreds of sympathizers from far and near came to pay their last respects 
to the Catholic priest who was killed by terrorists on his farm in Kujama, Kaduna State. The homely was that of lamentation over the state of insecurity in Nigeria. Some people are attacked by bandits and killed on their farm. Vitals died such a death. Dozens of priests held a procession carrying placards of various inscriptions to express their grievances. And we know that death is an inevitable uh, thing you know, in our lives. We, it must happen. It is artificial and it is not just the first. The Catholic Archbishop of Kaduna, Most Reverend Matthew Indagusu, said they have lost their voice from the death of the late priest. He noted that those who do not have what it takes to rule do not have any business with governance. I dare to say, if anybody is looking for evidence of a failed state, we have won. Even during the civil war, when we fought a civil war, we never had it this bad. All Nigerians are prisoners in their country. All Nigerians are prisoners in their homes. You can walk freely on the street. And I would like to say, there are people now angling for positions. If you know you cannot solve Nigerians' problem, don't put yourself. Late Reverend Father Vistus Urugu was born in 1972 and was killed by terrorists a week ago on his farm. And following recent media reports that terrorists who kidnapped passengers of the ill-fated Abuja Kaduna train shot one of the hostages. The relatives of the yet-to-be-released victims in a press briefing on Thursday threatened to commence physical protests along major roads and occupy government facilities in Kaduna and Abuja until their loved ones who are still in captivity are released. The relatives also said the abductee shot by the terrorists needs medical attention to survive. The report. It's been 94 horrific days for the victims of the Abuja Kaduna train attack who are still in captivity and subjected to physical and psychological trauma. Recent media reports that one of the abductees has been shot by the terrorist has sent shivers down the spine of the relatives as they fear the same fate might befall others. We read in the media that one of our abductees was shot by a non-state actor holding our loved ones in captivity. Unfortunately, this adopt adoptee is left unattended to the gun, the gunshot wound, and may lose, may lose his life, which we don't even know the state he is now. The state of that person that has gone shot wound. No antibiotics. Nobody has nobody to remove the the, the bullets from his body. Just imagine the current situation. He will be in, in the bush. Despite earlier protests by the relatives and negotiations between government and the terrorists, only 11 out of the 62 kidnapped passengers have been released. Hence, they are resolved to stage a protest. For those of us in Kaduna, we're going to the, in Kaduna, Abuja. The activity will start on Tuesday. We are going to have physical protests along major roads in Kaduna. We, we plan to occupy some key government par, uh, facilities. We are going to have sitting in those facilities. We plan to sit there till our loved ones are out. By Tuesday next week, when the relatives plan to stage their protest, it would have been 100 days since terrorists bombed the Abuja Kaduna train killing at least nine persons and abducting over 60 people. The organized labor movement is planning to hold a protest on the state of the nation. The protest is to call the attention of the government to the country's deteriorating security situation, the lingering strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and the unending energy crisis. Speaking at two separate conferences in Abuja, the president of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Ayubo Waba, and the president of the National Union of Local Government Employees, Ambali Olatunji, decried the worsening security situation in the country and asked the government to act. The Labour leaders also discussed other issues, including the ongoing constitution amendment, especially the aspect that touches on the autonomy of the local government and the judiciary. 
There is no way this situation can be allowed to continue. So I think there is an urgency in addressing this issue. And therefore, Central Working Committee decided that there will be a one-day national protest to call the attention of government to resolve this issue immediately. And despite spending 3.4 billion naira on primary education in two years and another 6 billion for post-primary schools in the 2022 budget, secondary school students in Taraba State are protesting decayed infrastructure in some government schools. This protest, specifically by hundreds of students of Sali Udogo Secondary School, was spurred by the lack of learning materials, science laboratory equipment for science practicals, as well as the dilapidated scale state of the classrooms. A report. Wednesday, 15th of June 2022, began just like any other day for the teachers and students of Sali Hudogo Government Day Secondary School in Taraba State. But the day did not end as it started, as students of the school decided to say enough is enough to the horrible learning conditions they are subjected to. The students staged a peaceful protest to express dissatisfaction with the dilapidated school infrastructure, overcrowded classrooms, and unequipped laboratory for science students. Trust TV learns that Sally Hudogo Secondary School has over a thousand students with 100 to 150 students clapped in one classroom. Presently, 266 students are already sitting for the senior secondary school examinations with no adequate preparations to guarantee success. The situation is what the students were determined to change through the strike action. The identities of the students who spoke to Trust TV were shielded to protect them from being victimized. We decided to do it on our own because unfortunately if you are to look at our school environment, you will feel a big pity for us, the students, where the ceilings are being destroyed. Nothing seems to be working good for us in the school. We are like, we don't have library, and then we have library prefects. What's the use of being a library prefect without having library in the school? We have um, kitchen prefects, but we, there is no food, nothing. Some of the students do sit on the floor to attend to lessons, lectures. Some bring mud from their house to lay it on the class to sit and receive lectures. So all these things will work out if the government or the school authority won't provide furniture or seats for the students to sit and receive their lectures. Actually, what happened to the students that embarked on a protest about the lack of text in the school? However, despite picture evidence by journalists who paid a visit to the school in the state, the government denied claiming that the school was well equipped with adequate learning materials. Sitting on the floor, hanging uh, by the windows, first and foremost, I went to the principal's office. After some interaction with the principal, I directed her to organize the students for me on assembly ground, which I met with the students and the staff on the assembly ground. I dressed the assembly of more than 40 minutes. I dressed them seriously and then uh, also gave them some counseling uh, uh, tips. It is no longer news that schools face the challenge of inadequate learning facilities, despite huge resources governments both at state and national level claim to inject into the education sector in the country. This is evident in the yearly budgetary allocations for improving learning conditions in school and employment of qualified and adequate teachers. You're watching Trust TV News Update. And still to come on the news. Residents groan as scarcity hits parts of the FCT. Details of this and more after the break. Do stay with us.
Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trust TV News Update. Now another look at our top stories. Independent National Electoral Commission issues 186 certified true copy of documents. And Catholic priests killed by bandits buried as clergy protest rising in security. And in other news, in line with its current expansion drive, Media Trust Group is repositioning itself to serve its audience better, especially with 21st century driven technological products and services that cater to the demands of emerging information dissemination and consumption culture. Aisha Salu reports that the owners of Daily Trust, Trust TV, Digital Trust, Amenia, and the soon to come Trust Radio are rebranding their products and services to project the new dynamics of media operations with a new logo and visual identity. The report. Media Trust Group is a diverse publishing company that has been in existence for over two decades with an audience base of millions within Nigeria and the diaspora. It offers qualitative products and services with the use of latest technology through self-motivated staff working to achieve the company's objective of growing steadily into a world-class integrated communication company. At the heart of this vision is the need to leverage the digital space to bridge the communication gap occasioned by the rise of modern technology. As of today, 24 years down the line, we feel the company has grown uh, not just into uh, bigger print media, but also a group. Because you know we are also into TV, and very soon we are going to go into radio. And uh, we've been uh, having our digital platform, our online version, but we made it better. We've embraced technology. So we feel that uh, this is the way to go. And so we are trying to become a global company. Because we are rebranding to launch ourselves into digital world. Um, it's a one-stop shop now, Media Trust. You have whatever you think of as far as media is concerned. We have the newspaper, we have the television, we have radio, and then we have the digital. And all in one shop, this building, this beautiful building. This goes to tell you how far this company has gone in 24 years. And it's the only media house in Nigeria that achieved this feat within the shortest possible uh, time. The rebranded Media Trust accommodates modern trends that satisfy stakeholders' expectations through an improved product in line with global best practices. You know Nigeria, we have a high uh, population of youth and most of these youth have embraced uh, digital online platform. So, uh, and these are important segments of the society that we cannot do without them. So while we will continue to be competitive, to continue to produce the print, for those that have been used to reading the hard copy, we also felt we should embrace the other segment of the society who have gone digital. Better stories, investigative stories, serious political stories, analysis, and uh, you know entertainment. We will satisfy the urge for news, the urge for entertainment, the urge for political stories, the urge for investigation. The management is positive that the rebranding is not just about aesthetics or artistic craftsmanship, but a statement of commitment to delivering more for our readers, viewers and indeed listeners worldwide in the years to come. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. And residents in Dutsi Sokale or community in Bwari Area Council of the Federal Capital Territory are groaning from the effects of water scarcity in the community, which they say has made life difficult for them. The residents say that the community, which depends on portable water from the FCT Water Board, has been cut off from access to portable water for over a week. Trust TV Sagir Ibrahim visited the community and now reports. Water, an indispensable necessity of life. Unfortunately, these residents have to find alternative means of getting water as the scarcity bites harder. My house is somewhere around there. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, I have to walk all the way down, you know, to the borehole, down this axis. Every day, every day. I mean, 
before I can I can be able to use water and go to work. If I don't do this routine every morning, uh, I can't get to work, I can't do almost anything at all. This is Sokale in Duse Alaji, a community just 15 minutes away from Lower Usuma Dam in Buari Area Council and the city's water source. Residents say they've not had water for more than seven days and are struggling to find alternative sources as the community depends on the FCT water board for portable water. For the past one week now, we've been out of water. And even before now, they do come and go. We still like two days without water. Then maybe one day, it will come. You know, but this one has been the longest uh, experience. Uh, the size, the six or feet, six hundred. Okay, one hundred nera. Hundred nera. A truck of it. The truck is one thousand two hundred. It's not from us. Okay, one thousand two hundred. That is six six hundred. They also decried the hike in water price by vendors who have taken advantage of the scarcity. Before it's thirty nera for a jerry can now. They say that although they had approached the water board to complain, not much was done to remedy their plight. The reason is because it says most some, some parts, some people living in the community are not paying water board. The water board now says some people adjusted their meter. So what water board will have done simply go to the people or to the compound that you think they adjusted their meter and disconnected them. Not using one person's mistake to affect everybody. Else. Not once, not twice now. Uh, so how do we get this information? It's from the water board. If you go to the office, they say no, they are not in charge of that this one is other from the above, this and that and that and that. That um, the town, people in the town are complaining that they don't have water. So they have to cut here that uh, you know, the lower hand. So that is it. We the pharmacies, we are living in this area, we don't want suffering. Suffering it. With inflation of food prices, poor electricity supply, bad roads, and even insecurity, residents lamented that the water scarcity has made living in the nation's capital city more difficult and called for quick government intervention to avert the water crisis. Sagir Ibrahim reporting for Trust TV. Nigeria and Portugal have expressed determination to bolster relations with concrete deliverables and stronger ties 46 years after the establishment of diplomatic relations. President Mahmoud Buhari said this on Thursday in Lisbon at a joint press conference with the President, Marcela Rabelo de Souza of Portugal. The President, in a statement from his media advisor, Garbushu, told the press after a one-on-one -on -one meeting with his Portuguese counterpart and an enlarged meeting between delegations that as many as 10 agreements and memoranda of understanding are being prepared for signing during his state visit to the European country. He said the MOUs include the establishment of an Atlantic Research Centre, air travel, political consultations, diplomatic training, cultural cooperation, investment promotion, chambers of commerce cooperation, women and child development, youth and sports development and digital economy cooperation. The government of Nigeria awarded a contract to Motor Angel, a Portuguese company, to construct a railway line that connects Kano in northern Nigeria to Maradi in southern Niger Republic. This partnership will surely open doors for more Portuguese companies to come to Nigeria as the largest and most populous economy in Africa with a young population, Nigeria is a very attractive investment destination. These MOU just signed and also cooperation on culture, on language, on social sectors, but most of all we must thank today our agency, ICEP, they are here, and your Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, because they organized this wonderful forum, full of Nigerian and Portuguese entrepreneurs. 
And now a look at the foreign scene where Russian missiles struck a nine-story apartment building and a resort facility near Ukraine's Black Sea port of Odessa early on Friday, killing at least 17 people and wounding dozens, Ukrainian authorities said. One missile that struck the building in the town of Vilhorod Dnyzovsky at about 1 a.m., killing 14 people, also wounded 30 people and caused a fire in an attached store building, the emergencies ministry said in a statement. Sergei Brachuk, spokesman for the Odessa Regional Administration, told Ukrainian state television that a rescue operation was underway as some people remained buried under the rubble after a section of the building collapsed. Another missile hit a resort facility, Brachuk said killing at least three people, including a child, and wounding one more person. And in sports, Israel Adesanya plans to finish Jared Kanonier in their UFC 276 headliner on July 1 in Las Vegas as he aims to retain his middleweight belt. Speaking at his exclusive pre-fight interview, the last style bender believes he will be too much for his American opponent, the Killer Gorilla, when they face off at the T-Mobile Arena early Sunday morning, Nigerian time. He said his approach to the fight will be a calculative and patient, while picking Kanonier apart before ultimately knocking or choking him out, as he aims to prove his doubters wrong after his last two fights went to the judges' scorecard. Although Adesanya acknowledges Kanonier's power, the 32-year-old says he is not too bothered and that his power does not make him any more dangerous saying he will neutralize his main strength by being evasive in the octagon. And that wraps up Trust TV News update for this hour. For more news, you can subscribe and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for watching.